Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast. I'm your host Dr. Harshita and today we are honored to have with us Dr. Su Wen Lim. Dr. Su Wen Lim has been a dedicated practitioner in the field of internal medicine for more than 10 years. Currently, she serves with the Ministry of Health Malaysia as an endocrinologist, specializing in managing various medical conditions such as diabetes, obesity, thyroid disorders and more. Today our topic of discussion is managing diabetes in pregnancy. Welcome Dr. Su. Thanks for the kind introduction. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So let's get started. So my first question is how critical is preconception planning in the management of diabetes in pregnancy and what key factors do you emphasize during this phase? So for patients with diabetes planning to conceive, we emphasize on good glycemic control and screening of diabetes complications prior to conception to prevent fetal and maternal complications. So what are some of the maternal complications? That would be diabetic ketoacidosis, deterioration of diabetic retinopathy, nephropathy, and some uh, major obstructive complications including spontaneous abortion, preeclampsia, polyhydramnios. Yes. Okay, so some major fetal complications you want to uh, avoid would be intrauterine death, major congenital malformations, macrosomia, and many other diseases. So, what do we include in preconception uh, planning? Okay, so it is a multidisciplinary approach. So we have to discuss with the patient regarding the timeline for pregnancy planning. Okay, and then advise them on their lifestyle, be it. physical activities diet smoking cessation and what and their optimal body weight prior to uh, conception as we know uh, patients with higher weight those who are overweight obesity there's higher rate of miscarriage okay we have to educate them regarding folic acid supplementation to pre- uh, to prevent neural tube defect appropriate contraception if their blood glucose readings are not to target we have to review all their medication and discontinue potentially teratogenic medications okay do not forget in diabetic patients to screen for complications such as, such as retinal screening and renal screening okay again and again we have to emphasize those patients who are on pre who has pre existing diabetes they have to achieve good glycemic control before conception to prevent the maternal and fetal risk complications as mentioned above Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Doctor Su. Now, uh, preconception planning indeed uh, lays foundation for healthy pregnancy journey. So let's move ahead. How do we screen for diabetes in pregnancy? So in Malaysia, we screen for gestational diabetes based on their risk factors. Okay, what are some of the risk factors that we consider uh, would that would include them? for a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test or we call it OGTT. So some risk factors are like if body their body mass index is more than 27 27 kg per meter square, if they have previous history of gestational diabetes mellitus, if they do have first degree relative with diabetes mellitus, history of macrosomia and some bad obstructive history or if they have current concurrent obstructive problems such as essential hypertension pregnancy induced hypertension or polyhydramnios okay so if they do have risk factors they have to be screened at booking with the 75 grams of gtt if the test is negative it should be repeated at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation for women who are above 25 with no risk factors as i mentioned earlier so this ogtt should be done at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation Okay, over diabetes is when the fasting uh, blood glucose levels is seven and above, or a random or post OGTT blood glucose levels of eleven point one and above, and these should be managed as pre-existing diabetes. Great. And in cases where insulin therapy is necessary, how do you tailor dosage and frequency to accommodate the changing needs of pregnant patient? So there's no blanket rule uh, of uh, how we start. Like every patient. uh we have to individualize their treatment so there's no blanket rule as to uh you start with basal first or basal then only bolus insulin we have to identify where the problem is and target the problem so we have to identify where is the hyperglycemia for the patient so if it's fasting or postprandial if it's fasting then most likely we need to start basal insulin first or if it's postprandial hyperglycemia we have to start bolus insulin first ah. so all this 
is individualized based on the patients and it is wiser to step up from a lower dose rather than to start high at a higher dose. Lah, okay? For patients with overt diabetes mellitus, as I mentioned earlier, they, this group of patients are at a higher risk of intrauterine death. So these patients, we would likely admit them to the hospital and titrate their insulin dosage, dosage very tightly. Okay, In terms of choosing the type of insulin, it depends on the patient's blood glucose trends, their patients, uh, the patient's lifestyle and work. So some of them may work well with human insulin, but some of them require analog insulin. Okay, So we need to tailor to each patient. So ideally, the patient would have weekly to two weekly insulin titration in our setting according to the patient's blood glucose profile. However, this actually could be taxing for the patient because they have to come to the uh, hospital or clinic every one to two weeks they and they have to balance and juggle with their work as well. So uh, currently, we are actually investigating the role of remote glucose monitoring in, uh, in pregnant patients with diabetes. So we are using Bluetooth glucometer. So this Bluetooth glucometer will capture the blood glucose levels of the pregnant mothers with diabetes, and it will be uh, Bluetooth transmitted to their phone and also at the same time transmitted to the cloud. So healthcare providers can view all this real time and also, also titrate their insulin remotely without the patients having to come to the hospital. So this will save a lot of cost and time for the patient. Great insights, Dr. Su. And let's talk about blood pressure control in managing diabetes during pregnancy. How significant is it? So diabetes patients are actually at higher risk of pregnancy-induced hypertension and also preeclampsia during pregnancy. As we know, there's a lot of uh, complications to the mother and the fetal if the patients develop preeclampsia during pregnancy, including one of the major complications would be intrauterine death. And uh, yeah, so thus their BP control is very vital as well and should be monitored during every visit. Yeah, and uh, now regarding the fetal health, how does the management plan adapt to ensure the best outcomes and what monitoring strategies do you find most effective? Okay, so women with uncontrolled uh, diabetes mellitus would have uh, a lot of fetal complications as I mentioned earlier. So those with uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or HbA1c that are not to target more than 6.5% and above should have a detailed anatomy scan at 18 to 20 weeks of gestation. Not too early, not too late because when it's too early or it's too late, we, can't, we cannot identify the uh, 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 anatomy and it would be a false. So uh, 18 to 20 weeks would be a good time and fetal echography can be considered as well. So what are the some of the uh, anomalies that we are looking at for, such as a neural tube defect, congenital cardiac disease, such as ventricular septal defect, intestinal atresia, some craniofacial uh, problems like uh, cleft lips, okay, renal dysplasia. So these are some of the common uh, anomalies that we can find in a patient uh, with a, in a fetus with whom the mother has diabetes in pregnancy. And now, uh, since we are talking about strategies, so I also want to understand what strategies do you recommend for continuous blood glucose monitoring in pregnant women with diabetes and how frequently do you advise ad adjustments? Okay, so for our routine, let's talk about their routine first, how we actually ask these patients to monitor their blood glucose. So it depends on uh, whether the patient is only ha uh, having oral hypoglycemic agents or if they are having uh, diet control versus insulin. So insulin can be, the patient may be on one, one ins once insulin per day or some up to four times of insulin per day. So patients who are on more intensive insulin regimen would require more frequent uh, blood glucose monitoring. Okay, So this is to ensure tight glycemic control to prevent maternal and fetal complications. So this frequency of blood glucose monitoring can vary from four times a day to as intense as seven to eight times a day. So pricking their, their, their finger seven to eight times a day is actually quite taxing and is can be emotionally draining as well. So some patients whom can afford, because CGM is actually, uh, continuous glucose monitoring or CGM is actually not funded in Malaysia, so they have to purchase themselves. So there are some data of on CGM recommended targets for pregnant mothers. 
And we do know that this blood glucose above the range uh, from the CGM is also, also associated with higher risk of large for gestational age ba uh, babies and also higher risk of neonatal ICU admission. But these are all just uh, small studies. Further larger studies need to be done. Yeah, so if they if there is a recommended target for CGM, it will it will be much better for the uh, diabetes uh, patients uh, who are pregnant. Thank you, Doctor Su, for clarifying this. Lastly, what key aspects of postpartum care do you highlight for women uh, who had diabetes during pregnancy? So, in patients who have uh, gestational diabetes, uh, diabetes, they are at higher risk of developing uh, full full blown diabetes later on. Uh. So, it is vital for them to remember to to perform the oral glucose tolerance test postpartum to determine if they're still in the they are in the pre diabetic or diabetic state. Of course, for those who already have pre existing diabetes, it most likely require diabetic medications postpartum. Okay, so these both groups of patients, be it gestational diabetes or if they have uh, pre-existing diabetes, they require uh, continuous follow-up with their lifestyle intervention, oral medication to ensure good glycemic control before they plan for the next pregnancy. But a lot of times, they actually defaulted their follow-up and eventually land up with the next pregnancy in full-blown overt diabetes. And this will lead to a lot of uh, complications in the mother and the fetal and also, of course, intrapartum and postpartum complications. Uh. Another thing that we should not forget when the patient delivers is their methods of contraception. It should be advised to the patient and it should be planned and discussed with the patient prior to the next pre pregnancy. Yes, Dr. Su rightly mentioned postpartum care plays a crucial role in, in ensuring ongoing health and well-being for both mother and baby. So thank you, Dr. Su, for sharing your valuable insights on managing diabetes in pregnancy. It has been an enlightening discussion and we appreciate your expertise in guiding our listeners through this important topic. Thanks, Dr. Hashita, for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Su. Now, uh, as we conclude our conversation, I encourage our listeners to stay informed and proactive about their health. And thank you for joining us today. Before we say goodbye, I encourage you to explore our Medsana's platform. It offers a unique opportunity to engage in enriching discussions, connect with esteemed medical professionals and contribute to the ongoing progress of healthcare. Until next time, thank you and take care.